Again, I'm Bob Hawk. I'm the Director of Sales here at Weisses. I've been here for 17 years. I can't believe it. But the product has evolved and we are continuing to develop the product. Uh, so we're going to eventually get to this screen again. But to start out, I'm going to rehash. So Don Beer, a couple of weeks ago, showed us a number of different things about the Agility 360 product. We called it 360 because our IT guys internally like that name. And I think it's a north, south, east, west. You can use it on all kinds of this stuff. So part one was a quick overview. So what exactly is Agility 360? If you missed the first session, I just have a couple of screens to catch you up. Agility 360 is our latest platform and it runs natively on an Android device. Native means that it runs on the device. It's not uh, emulation of something else. So it's right there installed on the, the uh, device itself. The 360 product is using web services to do transactions in Macola. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And if you look at the 360 product, it again is running on that Zebra device right here. It'll run on a number of different devices. Uh, Zebra has been the strongest device, but there are lots of people with alternative devices now. When you compare that to our longtime Agility Mobile product, Agility Mobile was designed around the Windows platform. So it has a Windows look and feel as compared to more of an app that you'd see on a mobile phone or something like that. The Agility 360 product, these are just some hot bullet points. It's running with Android OS and comparing that to the Agility Mobile, it ran on the Windows platform. And we also made it available on Androids. The, uh, this particular runs right on the device. Agility Mobile runs through RDP, Remote Desktop, Terminal Server, whatever you wanna call it. Both systems, you need a server. So either it's a Win, uh, IIS server or it's an RDP server. One of the key things to point out is that the Agility Mobile needs an RDP license, whereas there is no additional license cost over here. I particularly like the speed of the new product. It's very quick. It has a very small footprint, doesn't use much resource, and boom, the transactions go right through. Agility Mobile, it had no problem either. Uh, it was highly scalable with customers well over 100 devices and multiple warehouses all working together. I think you'll see the same type of scalability over here. We have a new look and feel with the user interface. The Agility Mobile has more of the Windows interface. And over here, we now have access to the device and we could take a picture, capture a signature, stuff like that. When we were on Agility Mobile, we just couldn't get to the services on the unit itself. So we were stuck inside the RDP framework. So what does this look like when you run it? If you run the application, you can scan an order number and it will bring back data. You can scan a serial number and capture it against the item on the order. This is our test app, and we're going to scan a serial number. Beep. Here comes the scan. And then we get the serial number added, and we're going to do that again for the dishwasher. And we'll go ahead and get that scanned serial number in. And then we're going to use the device itself to capture a signature. And it will you can actually sign on the dotted line here. And finally, we're gonna capture some pictures. This is our test app that we developed to demonstrate how this works. And I made a little movie out of it. 
So we're gonna get the dishwasher, and then we're gonna get the refrigerator. You can imagine really scanning a unit, getting the serial number, a picture of it, and capturing that and having, the, tr having this become part of the transaction. Here's the address where they were delivered. And by nature, these devices, just like your cell phone, will capture a geolocation. So all that becomes part of your transaction record inside of Macola and Wysos, and the pictures are stored on your hard drive, on the hard drive of the server. Okay, part two is the real thing. We're gonna do some transactions. I am going to start out with a transaction on my phone, and then I'm gonna do the lion's share of the work on this device here. Let's go ahead and minimize. And I am going to launch my camera. And I am going to grab the camera. And we're going to actually do a transaction right here on my cell phone. So you can see how responsive it is. Now, over here, I have my printer. And as I do the transaction from the phone, it's gonna you know, send the message to do the printing. So I'm gonna use my finger to scroll down and I'm gonna do some entering here with the little keyboard. And it just validated that that's a PO that's printed and released. And I'm gonna get the item. So I, on my cell phone, remember, it has a camera, but it doesn't really have uh, a scanning device. I could hook up a Bluetooth scanner to it, I suppose, but I don't have one. And I'm gonna put in my lot number here. And I'm gonna get a quantity of 500. So that transaction's done, and I just got my label over here. So you can see the Agility product prints the same way the, the other one did. So let me go ahead and close this before I make everybody ill. Okay. And maybe one more time, turn the camera back on. And I have my trusty MC9300 here. And I am going to display it on this very nice uh, product called Moby Control provided by MCAT. So this is actually part of their service and they've hooked it up for me so I can act like a really big customer. So I'm gonna log in. You're watching me log in. And there's the same interface that was on my cell phone. And again, one more time, I'll do a transaction here. And I have to scan the right document. That's validation. The item and the lot and the quantity. and I'll get another label. So if you're familiar with Wysis, Wysis bundles in a very nice label design product and it comes as part of our framework. And when you become a customer, you just have that. And documents are stored in a SQL database. So as you modify the documents that you need for your business, they're saved in there. You don't have to go to a, a second PC and print them out. And we always like to refer to uh, labeling product as it comes in the door at the first touch point. So if I've labeled this product as it comes in, then the next guy that uses it in manufacturing or shipping has something to scan. It's basically like putting your groceries away when you get home from the store. Not I'll do it later, I'll do it right now. That's how we keep things nice and tidy. Okay, if we've done our receiving, 
the next thing we can do here is put away. So put away means that when I've received these items and they're sitting on the dock, I'm gonna take them and go put them somewhere in the warehouse. So I've got them on my, my tow motor or my cart and I'm gonna wheel them out and I'm gonna actually physically put them in a bin. If it's never been there before you get a message, just to confirm, and then the quantity, I'm gonna put a thousand in that bin. So that transaction is done. There's 500 more to go. I could only put a thousand in that bin. I'm gonna put the balance in a different bin. So that transaction is complete and McCola is up to date. So from a point of relevance, let's come over here and we're just gonna hop into McCola real quick. And let's just go find that PO. And if I drill down, you'll see here are the receivers of the 500 and the 1,000 that I've already got. So they're already in the system. Okay. Now, my agenda looks something like this. We've done PO receiving and label printing and put away. I'm just gonna briefly do a transfer, you know, some of the standard inventory transfers. We're gonna look at cycle counting, how that might work for you. Then we're gonna do something that's called sales order staging. So a stage is you send Bob out into the warehouse to go get something for a sales order, but he's gonna drop it off in the shipping department and then Aaron is gonna go ahead and build the shipment. So you have two people working together, two people doing different things. So staging is the validation and the transfer to the shipping department. Then I'm gonna use the handheld to build a shipment. And then I'm gonna complete the shipment using our new agility shipping applica application. And then we'll do a quick lot trace so you can see how that works through the system. All right, so let's go back to the scanner here. And I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna close this app, and we're gonna take a look at, you can see here on the screen, there's the standard issues, receipts, and transfer. And I'll just do a transfer here. And again, the item is a binned and lotted item. And my default warehouse, I just hit enter, and I'm gonna transfer it from that bin, same warehouse, and I'm gonna transfer it to here. And the lot and the quantity. Transfer complete. If you've been using the Agility Mobile, I've heard some customers referred to, we're waiting on the red ball. There is no red ball here. It just goes lickety split and does the transaction. So continuing on, that's a transfer. And from a cycle counting point of view, just come in here, I'm gonna load agility. And I'm gonna use this component to demonstrate what's happening. So many companies do counting. Sometimes you do wall-to-wall -wall physical, sometimes you do a group of items called a cycle. And you'll notice here that I have my A binned item and my A bin lotted item here. I have some in this bin and some in that bin. So this is my cycle count. And you'll notice here in the counted column, nothing has been counted. So if I come back 
to the scanner. And you know what? I can make this bigger for you. That might be easier to see. And I will open the cycle count. I'm going to type in my batch. That's my batch. And, and basically, I would be directed by, to, you know, to an aisle or to an area where all these items that I'm supposed to count. So if we look at this, I'm going to go to bin A200. And the system says I, I should find 1,000. I know that's probably true, but, but we're, we're going to physically count that. So I go to the bin. I count the item, scan the item that I'm counting, scan the lot number, and you see it, it found the tag immediately. And now the quantity, I count them all, and I came up with 999, not 1,000. And I press the count button, and off we go. And why is this helpful? Well, first of all, I didn't necessarily have to write anything down. I have eliminated the writing it down, and I've eliminated having to someone having someone go into Macola and have to update the tag numbers. I'm doing both of those just with the scan gun. I may want to mark the box or the or the products there. I might want to put a mark tag, you know, some type of a tag or a sticker on the product. In the old days, remember you had tag numbers you really actually physically put on product. You may not have to do that anymore and just mark the box as counted so you don't count it again. Again, if I go to S100 on the scanner, I want to count that. So the I'm going to go to clear that, go to a different bin, count the item, the lot, and the quantity. And so I found the other one over there. Come back here, there's a little refresh button or you can just hit F5 and it refreshes your grid. You don't have to close it and reopen it. So there's what's happening. Another thing that's really nice about this is the controller, accounting manager, someone can actually watch the count happening. And if you see me count a million here and fat finger it, you can you know, call me on my cell phone and say, hey, why don't you check that item again? Maybe you did it. There's a bunch more grids over here under cycle counting. So for instance, there's the variance grids and audit tag count. This is the one I have open right now. Let's open the quantity variance. So here, it's, it's only showing items that have a variance of one. Change it to zero. And then there's our binned item again. And you can see there is no variance on that item. I found them all, even though they were in, one was in the wrong bin. So I just, then at the end of the day here, you post your inventory and you're done, good to go. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna close up my screens here a little bit. And we're going to look at one of my favorites over here. There's a when the star, just so you know, if you're over here on one of these things and you want to make this a favorite, you just right mouse and you can say favorite. You can also send it to your desktop. You can just have one icon on your desktop. It's kind of a nice thing. I'm going to come back to the star. I'm going to open the pick management screen. And I want to release a sales order so I can actually go out and pick against the sales order. So my sales order here is 994. And I'm going to, you can see here, I've already got a quantity available. I'm just going to print the pick ticket. So WISIS will not only print a nice looking document for you, it'll change it to a status four. And you can see here, I've got suggestions. If you're not into using the scan gun to direct you, 
This is kind of a poor man's way of, of getting bins where you can go get stuff. This is our standard pick ticket. Close that. And now my order is a status four. Okay, and so if I go to the scan gun, and I have to drive it with my finger over here, I'm gonna do directed staging. So my sales order is 994. I'm scanning that off the pick ticket itself. Uh, you know, there's other ways to do that. The item that I wanna pick, I'm gonna scan that. You see there on the screen, it's directing me to bin 200. So this is the alphanumeric first location in the warehouse where I'm going. And based on that characteristic, it's a lot, and it's directing me to the earliest lot for that product. So there's the item on the sales order that I want. It's asking me to confirm that I'm getting it out of that bin. And I have to make sure I get the lot number and the quantity. So I'm gonna get all 432. So the screen clears. If there were more items to pick on the sales order, it would keep directing me to the next item, to the next item, to the next item. Once I get all the way through, it gives me this screen, I know I'm done. So what's happened is I have validated the sales order and the item, and I've, I've not done anything except transfer the product from the warehouse onto my cart or tow motor or pallet or whatever I'm doing, and I'm gonna wheel it over to the staging area, and then Aaron or someone else is gonna go ahead and build the order. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to build a shipment. And I'm gonna use our new shipping system, so let me open that up. And that is the agility picking and packing module, which is the core module to start with. For those of you that are new to WISIS or new to shipping, the WISIS applications are completely integrated with the McCola data model. We're not doing it in a separate system. We're shipping against the real McCola sales order and moving inventory during confirmed shipping. You'll see over here, I have a number of different methods that I could be shipping by. The order header will direct me to the order itself. So I'm gonna build a shipment and then you're gonna watch it build dynamically. So a, a worker could be building a shipment at door one, two, three, et cetera. You'd have multiple shipments being built all at the same time. And you can actually see it happening. And we're gonna go ahead and begin by creating a new shipment number and then adding a new carton. Now I'm gonna really validate the order again because you can have multiple sales orders in a shipment as long as they're going to the same place. I'm gonna get the item and the bin. I could default that to the staging bin, but it's just as easy to shoot it because it's there. And the lot number that I'm gonna ship and the quantity. Now, I could put all 432 in the box, but they don't fit. I can only get 144 in the box. So I hit enter, and now I've put that as my first carton on the shipment. I could print a label for carton content. Um, I can you know, print the, any other labels that I need to along the way. So here we have shipment number, 435, and so this is what's happening. We call this the shipping tree, the agility shipping tree, because it's building a matrix here uh, with items in cartons or, or pallets or whatever you're doing. So as I go, I can hit the refresh screen if I'm the manager to see, or maybe even customer service would wanna look at this. So this time, Right here, I'm gonna to touch this button for new carton. 
So I, you can see there's a new carton on the screen. And again, I'm going to scan the item and the bin and the lot and the quantity. New carton. And we're going to do that again. Goes pretty fast. So I have completely built that shipment. If I go back over here, refresh the screen. I now have carton one, two, and three, and I have the items in there. And I have the data of what, you know, what, what serial or lot number are in the box. So here I have a number of options. I could change the ship via. I could print labels now if I want. I can directly call UPS. We're not going through ship rush anymore. We're going directly to UPS, FedEx, or USPS. The reason these are, are not highlighted is because the order header had UPS marked for the order. Then you ask, well, why is LTL available? Well, sometimes things don't work out and the shipment might be too heavy for UPS and it gets stopped. And so you, we're gonna always make the LTL button hot so you can override that if you want. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the UPS button. And it, it goes, it's gonna go ahead and bring up the last screen. And I just need to add my dimensions. If I had box types figured out ahead of time, which is always handy, like they would have already known those dimensions. And it's gonna have the weight here. If you have a scale, there's a get weight and you can get a scale weight for each box. Then there's some options over here and that sort of thing. You can add an email address if it didn't come through. And then you're directed up here. This is a button that you can touch with your finger on a touch screen monitor. I'll touch it with my mouse and I got my labels. So here's label one. When you set this up, you're gonna to have to have your own UPS account and that sort of thing so you can test things out. Label two, label three, and of course, then you can just print them out however you wanna do that. I printed them to the screen, but you would just have them go to your printer directly. Okay, back to our quick agenda. I thought I would end up on here doing a lot trace to show you how that might work. So if you're on a current release of Agility, you may not have touched every button inside of Agility, but this is kind of a fun one. And the lot trace pulls together the Macola lot number and traces it all the way through forward and backward. So if you know your lot number, and the lot number here is 21, 10, 01. and you say go, you can add more criteria to these filters if you want. And then it's gonna bring back all the transactions in Macola based on where they occurred. So I'll go ahead and sort this alphabetically here and then by date and time. So now these are the transactions and how they happen. So if you look at the sales order here, you could actually see this lot number, the issue to the sales order. And then there's some buttons up here at the top. So when I'm on the sales order, the, the order button is hot. If I'm on the PO, the PO button is hot. So you might, you know, a customer calls in and says, this is my lot number, I have a problem. You can first validate the customer information and when things got shipped out, we'll pull up some dialogue information. Uh, you can look down through here and see this. You can see the customer, that sort of thing. 
And then you could uh, even print off some documents here. This was a pro forma invoice. I haven't posted yet, so it won't have the invoice number and stuff, but I've got everything else along the way here with the tracking numbers. So that's coming from the customer. Then I could actually, if it was manufactured, you'd see the either pop or shop floor here. And then I can drill back into the specific lot numbers for here's the lot numbers here that have been received. And so if I hit the pop dial, the PO dialog, it'll pull that up. If I needed a copy of the PO, I can get another copy right here. Maybe I'm getting audited, need some documentation. And of course, you always get an error that you don't expect. And the other nice thing about this data is you can just dump it to Excel if you need to do that. So whether it's drilling forward or backward or dumping it to Excel or printing off a document, you have all that information at your fingertip. Okay, Aaron, do we have any questions along the way?